Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, do, do you see uh, my presentation? I think everything works fine. Uh, I would like to thank Eric Crystal, who was uh, here with us just a minute ago, and people at MCN who invited us to be part of this year annual Congress. This gives us the opportunity to share our experiences of digital transformation at Museo de Arte de Lima, so Lima Museum of Art. I'll we, I will start by introducing myself and then let Jose Carlos do the same before jumping into the presentation. Oops, someone else. Uh, so um, my name is, uh, and I invite you to, to put and write your questions in the chat box so we can answer it at the end of the session. Um, so my name is Rafael Guillard. I'm project coordinator here at Mali. I coordinate the efforts for the implementation of two digital projects, which are Historias, which is a digital content platform that I'm going to talk about later in this presentation, and the future software for the management of the museum's archive. Jose Carlos? Yes, and I'm Jose Carlos Mariate. I, I, I'm, I, I am a curator and independent scholar, writer, but I, I was a member of the Board of Trustees at the, the Museum of Art until this year. I'm still helping, supporting the, 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 the team there, and especially the Curatorial Committee and the Digital Transformation Initiatives. Yeah, so perhaps just to give you uh, 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 an overview of you, what you see here, because what you are looking at is the, the, the facade of the, of the museum. Uh, this was called the Exhibition Palace or Palacio de la Exposición in Spanish, where the Mali is located right now and was a pioneering building in, in Latin America. It was erected on a rectangle of 80 meters long by 54 meters wide. Uh, with neo Renaissance influences, and, uh, and it covers two floors, about uh, ten thousand square meters. Um, there was there is a beautiful central courtyard, and uh, the manufacture of the columns made of iron were imported from Europe, uh, attributed uh, to the Eiffel House, and possibly is the earliest uh, um, important new uh, I mean um, building with this new construction technique uh, in Peru. Uh, it was uh, the palace was at, at the heart of, of one of the most important it was one of the most important urban projects of the 19th century and the, in the park and the palace in 1972 there was a huge exhibition of art science and industries it was a sort of an eclectic exhibition of 80 different categories uh, that sought to show uh, the, the development of peru by gathering under the same roof uh, specimens of natural history, inventions, samples of industrial, agricultural, manufacturing production, works of art and archaeology. So anything, everything, anything and everything. So um, by 1954, I mean, and then it had lots of different uses for, for decades. But in 1954, the City Council of Lima loaned the, the building to the uh, Arts Patrons Association with the purpose of building an art museum in Peru. So it's a, an, a landmark exhibition venue, which holds today a survey of almost 3000 years of history uh, of Peruvian art from pre-Columbian textiles and potteries to uh, mid uh, 20th century painting and also contemporary art. It has actually the, the largest, uh, it's the largest contemporary art collection in the country. So, um, but we are not here to talk about the, the museum. We are here to talk about, uh, yeah, about the, what, I mean, the changes that were done, but especially how we think about museums, what it means to be a museum in the 21st century, because after the coronavirus, which was terrible for, for cultural organizations, um, uh, where, where there were many reasons why it ha has been so detrimental. I mean, mostly because, of course, there was this reliance on the physical and uh, or the face-to-face -face format, no? And with the closure of cities, cultural institutions have, for have been forced to cancel all the public activities. And that's what happened. I mean, it I mean, digital gained momentum, that drove uh, digitalization and the dissemination of content. But if we think out loud, are cultural organizations merely broadcasters of content? Because the importance of cultural institutions is not only to safeguard, collect, or disseminate their contents, but 
to understand the, their potential based on those in, on the material characteristics of, of those concepts, namely the digital. So um, for, for, for Mali, art and culture means, uh, I mean, it's a mean of our social cohesion and citizenship and provides uh, spaces for participation. So how we can build that inclusivity uh, through the online uh, channels, that, that was more or less the, the, the great challenge uh, and that's how we started to build digital capabilities at, at the Mali. Actually, um, from my experience, I, I come from an information systems perspective. I work in, in art and technology for all my life, but my professional background is information systems. My work on Mali was much closer to a change manager in order to carry out this transformation with the help of Rafael and, uh, and other people there. And perhaps it's important to say that there were three uh, fundamental axes uh, that had to be considered um, when you think about um, uh, this, uh, at least is how we developed our roadmap. So one was, one were the platforms, the other one, the, the management, and the other one, uh, the content. And when we talk about platforms, here we're talking about the technologies and the means that we have uh, or we need to carry out our work. It, it can range from a website, from a mailing system, from the collection management system, we use TMS, a payment platform, the archive of the or the bibliographic, the library system, or other specialized websites. So, um, um, I mean, and also we we also carry uh, at, at Mali we carry a relatively successful low cost course uh, uh, program that reached good, a good part of the population, but that was only on site. So. We also need to build a, a digital a digital platform for that. So, but the idea of platforms is not only technical; it is also cultural. So, cultural I mean, platforms must generate access and allow us to open the dialogue. It's not just a question of generating access, but also to opening uh, dialogue and 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 build a, a critical perspective with our audiences. So that was one side. The other one was the management and. How, how could we get every, everything of this operationalized, executed? Who is responsible of this tool or the other one? Who measures the data? Uh, it is only a question uh, of, of, it's not only a question of what should be done, but also of having the necessary people and establishing protocols that will make the processes easily transferable from one to another person. So, I mean, that was also necessary. We had to build that from scratch, as I will tell you a little bit in a moment. And the third part is that part that it's, it's becoming very fashionable now, which is content. And it's a matter of carrying out a sort of translation or mediation uh, uh, of how we uh, develop that face-to-face -face experience into the digital realm. And that's, that's beyond the concrete experience of the exhibition or a digital channel. It, 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 it should allow, connect many uh, contents together in order to build the storytelling. Rafael will also talk about that in, in, later. So what we, we, when we started, it was, it was nice in a way because there was nothing. I mean, the, um, the, the museum was not that, I mean, though they had several platforms working to already, they, they were not keen of integrating the platforms and, 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 and they were relying on, different technologies of, an, on, of a diverse ecosystem of technology. Some of them were, were legacy, legacy technologies, and the other ones were a little bit more uh, recent. But the thing is that we, we called that phase zero because it was the basics, which began with a study of the existing ecosystem, what we had. For example, there, I mean, as I was saying, there were the different platforms, some of them carrying the same function. function or there were many databases with different categories for the same thing. So there was not a consistent metadata. So, I mean, even, even updating the internal mailing system, I mean, they had three mailing, two, two or three mailing systems. We integrated everything to just one mailing, mailing system. Um, in short, it, was, it's a, it has to do with a series of details that um, where I mean that enabled us to work not only faster but especially more efficiently, and that was the first change of mindset. Working everything with digital tools in the cloud, there, there was no cloud. Imagine, uh, I mean, of course, people were using Google Docs, but there was not re really a, a centralized cloud. 
uh, which was absolutely necessary because no one could go at that time to the museum. So fortunately, I mean, bad, but fortunately in a way, I mean, the, 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 the COVID prompted us to work in, in this more collaborative uh, way. So that was the first phase, which was like, start from zero. And then we started with, 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 with let's say what it's right now today available. So, so, I mean, the first step was to activate a temporary website. The, the previous website was, I mean, the, the CMS, the content management system was terrible. Nobody could use it, only experts. So we said, okay, everybody should be able, I mean, we, we give in, enough um, privileges depending on the, on, the, on the person and what they have to do. And everybody's gonna edit the website. It's not gonna be one guy that is gonna centralize all this information. Everybody is responsible for their information. And that was a huge um, mind shift also. And let's not forget that not all public, uh, uh, not all the audience enters to see the exhibitions. Many do do it to, to, to make research, others to access the courses. So, I mean, we had to think in a much more ample way. And that's why we also, I mean, all these were decisions that were taken by the team at the museum. No? So that was that was the the let's say the stage in which we were in. We will talk a little bit more about the data dashboard in a, in a moment. But um, we also set up an online shop using Shopify. I mean, the, a ticketing system that uh, that uh, and uh, when when the the pandemic was over, at least when it was it was diminished for quite some time, we we were able to open the museum, uh, and all this was data. All this was data that we started to gather for the first time that, that helped us to get lots of insights as we will see in a moment uh, that, that enabled us to, to build on the other stages that we are working on. So, I mean, we are right now in that phase, in the second phase, um, in, 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 in what we see as tomorrow, but it's to, tomorrow today, um, which is a new website, uh, a platform for digital publications, for the digital archive, um, because we have lots of documents. I mean, the Mali has, I mean, once more, when we conceive a museum, we need to understand its complexity. And in the case of the Mali, uh, there, are, there are many different uh, areas uh, uh, um, uh, that, are, um, that need to be taken into account. So, I mean, that's, that's I think, in a nutshell. I think, uh, Rafael, you, you would like to add to this. Yeah, yeah, to this, I mean, th there is something true. There are like many aspects of the museum's works that we're, gonna, we're taking into account into our digital transformation strategy. And when we look, I mean, this is what is happening today. And we're going to publish all of this tomorrow. But at the end, there is like this whole ecosystem that we're building. And in, in the case of Mali, every member of the team, every worker, at the museum has like participated into building this ecosystem, which is like a partial view of what it's going to exist even in the future, because we're not taking into account other systems like uh, a, a, a DAM, a digital asset management system, and the CMS that we're going to build for the, um, the many aspects of our future website, who's going to combine another couple of projects to make like a whole proposal of an experience online for the museum that's gonna let you travel across all of these systems, across all of the material who comes from, which comes from the archives, who can come from the collection and even the contents we're gonna create in collaboration with, uh, with artists and with um, curators and even with the public. So I don't know, Jose Carlos, is there something else you would like to add? No, I mean, let, let's move on because I, I think we, we are short of time. Yeah. I talk, so, I, I, talk, I, talk, I, I talk too much about the museum, I think, at the, at the beginning. Well, we're going to start to talk about the actual projects. So and I think you're going to probably recognize yourself into what we're going to show in this first stance, because uh, we all had this, this, this reflection, this uh, the thought, no, at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, of the pandemic, of course, it was a present thing. So, how do we translate the real experience into the digital world? And we've done some experiences, uh, you all have, and we've come to some conclusions. I've tried some some different things and innovative things. 
that were done before or we've seen before. Um, the first, the first one is the actually the digitization of the museum, almost the museum itself, its galleries, its collections, its archival material, and and so on. So it's the 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 galleries, as I said. Uh, you've seen that before. We did it at Mali, of course. Uh, this was done last year during the pandemic, when the museum was closed. Uh, we start doing everything online. We move into the the digital realm uh, to keep a contact with our audiences. Uh, and we try many things. Of course, there's the conferences. Uh, there was a podcast. There's also social media, which was very important for transition into the digital world and keeping a uh, contact with our audiences. And then there was this, which is uh, actually um, a, a collaboration with an, an artist. And we're starting to do web art uh, and digital art. So I think, I believe, like this is one of our greatest, greatest achievements. And Jose Carlos is gonna talk about it later because it also empowers and gave capabilities to the artists to better know their audiences in the digital realm. So uh, I invite you to, to see this project. It's called Todos los Faros, so, so all the lighthouses of the Peruvian coast. It's a project in collaboration uh, with the artist Luz Maria Bedoya and with the support of Fundación Telefónica, which has been part of many of the projects we've done so far and has been helping to, to build this digital ecosystem. Jose Carlos, I'll let you talk yeah, about Perhaps just, just, just wrapping up sure. what you said, Rafael, about the Todos Faros. I think it's very interesting because for, for, I mean, it was not just a website, which was, of course, a digital uh, production, uh, uh, jointly, a joint initiative by Telefonica and the Museum of Art, which is called Irradia Project. But we also um, enabled uh, the analysis of the users, that what were the users uh, um, um, interacting with on the website. So we created a special dashboard that allows the artists and the, uh, and the curators and the team at Mali and Telefonica Foundation to review the KPIs uh, as, as, as we do at the Mali, and we will talk about that in a moment, to make informed decisions. And it was very interesting for the artist because the artist usually what happens with an artist is that he puts a work online or, or physically and that's it. And that, 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 that's, that's where the work ends. And no, in this case, that was where the work was starting that's because the, for the first time, this artist was able to realize how many people were getting into the, the website and also to in which parts they were interacting and also what tweaks we could make in order to generate better interaction, not just numbers, but also in terms of quality. So, I mean, that's a, a different change of paradigm also towards the way in which artists work with the museum, not just by putting a piece, but, but being really engaged with the audience. We, we find finally one of our main, um, uh, our main uh, 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 pursuits. And uh, as, as Rafael was saying, I mean, uh, we, we, we tried in all this process to build a data-driven culture. Um, so today, both the management of the database segmentation, as well as the measurement of data and audiences is handled by the archives and libraries team. And, and they also produce the dashboards. Uh, we do that for several reasons. The main one is technical. It is a team that has the most experience in this type of analysis. But there is also here a paradigm shift. We usually see libraries or archives as boring spaces, outdated, uh, passive access to information. But today they need to manage data and they manage more data. So archives and libraries in museums are have a central role. To this end, the, the, the Mali's libraries and archives teams was trained using Data Studio. And we use additional tools like Supermetrics or Hotjar to generate much better information. So, which is interesting is that uh, with, the, with the team, with the curatorial team, with the, with the marketing team, with, with the uh, educational team, we analyze the impact of, of, of the exhibitions in real time or also of, of the use of the website. And we compare the digital users with the in-person users. Uh, and for example, we, we noticed that 60% of our audience were female. So you cannot talk about Damali in terms of he 
him, but of she, her. I mean, it's a completely different uh, way of thinking. Uh, uh, so first, when we think about the Mali, we think of, we need to think about, uh, and, it, and it's even a person around the 15, 16, 17 to 20 years old. So it's just, she, she is a young uh, person. So that's how also we envision the profile. So data allows us not just better teamwork, uh, where the problem no longer belong to a single area, but to the team. But also, but also, I mean, it 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 it, it generates other um, uh, new insights. So that's that's also, I think, a very relevant thing that that was a complete change. The, now at the Mali, we have a, 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 a once a month uh, the the board, the board of trustees. Uh, and the, the, the management team and the curators, they have access to this data and, and they look at it and they, they analyze it. Um, yeah, so that's like a big paradigm shift. Yeah, if I may add, there's, of course, this is, this is a big overview of the, the tools we use with some of the data we collect. So we see the tools that Jose Carlos was talking about. And as part of it, of course, there are the tools, but there are also the culture, the, culture, the processes, that we're establishing. This is the, um, the, the dashboard that we gave to the artist Luz Maria Bedoya, as um, Jose Carlos mentioned before. So she also had the possibility to see and track um, the, the ways the, other, the, the interactions with the audiences. And as part of other things that we're establishing, there have been also um, data scrums in the museum to, to do, um, to find ways to improve our digital assets, our digital experience and the overall experience of visiting the museum. There is also this data newsletter for the workers at the museum so they can get a glimpse at what's happening depending on their, their work, the work that they're doing at the museum, the departments and other. And of course, data is used for a couple of things. So better understanding uh doing better decision making when for example when you're going to send a newsletter or communicating regarding a, a event you will know what has happened before and make decisions for the future future it can be a matter of a week you will learn something uh one day and you will apply it like the next couple of days and you will see results uh, so this is for continuous improvement in the way we work we communicate and the overall experience in our digital platforms and also for sensing opportunities as Jose Carlos, Jose Carlos mentioned we had like an overview of the kind of audience we're talking to so we can better uh, choose the way to talk with them uh, the kind of projects the kind of, of dialogue we would like to to apply even the the, the discourse then so so this is it and um, Jose Carlos, I know you, you would like to talk about the way of seeing the museum as, as information. You talk a little about it, but we're staying. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that what we already said has to do with that. I mean, that we, we need to think of the museum as as, a, as, a, as information, but not just as a single type of information, but as the information that it's built on the objects and the collection, as the systems that require to be interoperated, but also that allow us to work efficiently and in, in a streamlined way. And also about experience. I mean, about the, the storytelling, which is completely different. Nobody is going to, I mean, the audience, the general audience is not gonna go to, to an online collection to search for, for, for objects, or, or perhaps for a, for, for, a, for, a, for a school lesson or, or obviously researchers, but the people want to get experiences. And for that, you need all these systems built together and enable to interoperate them and to build stories that grab information for from different uh, 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 assets and build these narratives, which are not typical narratives. These are not linear narratives. They are built from different streams of information. It's a different type of narrative also. But I mean, th these are the ways in which we see the museum as information. So we come to the digital world thinking, and it was as part of our digital strategy to extend our mission, of course, reimagine the museum experience. This is not something new, but how we do it, how we do it in, in Peru as well, because something very special is a very special context with uh, some uh, limitations, some opportunities and a lot of work to, to do, a lot of space as well to explore 
as a cultural institution using new means of communicating and reaching people outside of in Lima and outside of Lima, so the capital, because uh, Mali is, is the museum uh, which is based in, in Lima and has always deserved in a way his, uh, his community. And we're extending that by the use of the digital, digital tools and digital world. So of course, there are like three main things that are both important to, to keep in mind is like relating to, to new communities, of course, uh, managing data, managing information, creating it. And there is also a very important part of the work that we do at Mali that we're trying to, to recreate in the digital world. It's being an example of good museum practices and bringing up the work of a community of museum workers, historians that are new, that are established and they know their work. So it, the museum, it's a platform for voices, but also, also for, for professionals. So this is where Historias Arte y Cultura del Peru comes, which is a, a, a new pro digital project we are working on with the support of Fundación Telefónica, which is a, a website, uh, which is uh, powered by the museum's database uh, from the collections and the archives. So in a way, you will have access to the museum's collections, but there's a, another type of work that's been done uh, as well is that we've been developing contents, new contents, and we've been trying to create, create an ecosystem inside of these platforms where information communicates. So there are like things from the database, like artworks or biographies from Peruvian artists that we've been working on for the past month that are related to other type of stories or, or information or knowledge that we call historias, so stories that are, you can find into the into the platform so the idea is to travel across all of this that so you will do it in the museum and you will do it between the physical experience and the digital experience and and recreate this in the platform so at the moment it is both a research project where there's a lot of content being created for the platform we used to call it the encyclopedic platform so we wanted to have like a whole world of knowledge into it but also making it uh, accessible, like understandable and relevant for our communities and our audiences. Uh, you will find as well, and this is about to come in the next few months, uh, the pieces from the collection as well as archaeological objects. And as we said, in the in the way of making, um, creating new new ways of of communicating this knowledge, this information, we created two interactive maps: one for pre-Hispanic um, cultures. So you, you will have the possibility to navigate into the map uh, and find uh, these uh, pre-Hispanic uh, spots on the map to see and learn more about it. So it's interactive. It, it has this uh, map and we all in Peru relate to the, the map. We have like this, uh, this uh, comprehension of it and we like to use it. We like to see it everywhere. So we said, let's, let's use it as the starting point of this of this platform and there's like two two layers in in the map one for pre-hispanic art and the other word for amazonian art so you will have most of the pre-hispanic in the coast and then the uh, the amazon in in the other and it's it's still undergoing it's an undergoing project but the idea is to to show innovative ways to travel across uh, across the database and of course, historias are explanatory, conceptual, historical, sometimes very personal entries regarding the rest of the information. So another layer of analysis of the museum uh, database and the museum's artwork and more. So the collection, basically. Uh, as I said before, this is a project and the museum as well through the digital projects it works as a, um, it holds a community of professionals uh, who's been using, who are, have been using the museum as a platform to get a career started, to, to push innovative ideas. And so it mobilizes, it uses a lot of, of human resources uh, to create this, this content. 
they are senior advisors, they are junior to mid level historians, there are 15 senior art historians, archaeologists who are working at curating the contents that we are creating. And of course, there is the, the team at the museum, as we said before, so the archive and collection specialist as the curators. Um, so let's get back to our main challenges and then we're going to open up the discussion with uh, the path forward where we are looking to, to achieve and what we're going. So our main challenge is to get back on what we've uh, said before. Uh, the first one, probably it's managing to become a lean, a leaner organization when money comes through grants for specific projects. So it's a very special way of working here in, in South America because uh, we get we get money for for this but i mean there are both um, things to consider there are two things to consider is that people also changes human resources changes when uh, when when the projects gone the projects are gone or we gone through the projects and also our economical means to achieve greater development to achieve continuous improvement uh, there's also uh, a very special thing happening in Peru, and you've probably uh, felt the same, that is the, um, the fact that we have to develop partnership with digital entrepreneurs, uh, with uh, developers and others, by means of creating a greater intersectoral collaboration. So creating like um, a, a ecosystem, a collaborative culture, where we can all share uh, knowledge and best practices regarding museums and regarding digital development. And there is also this particular point that is being always aware of accessibility and relevance of our digital content, but also our digital platform. So we cannot do something that you will not be able to, to open up in, in other places of Peru because of uh, infrastructural conditions or problems. So the path forward regarding uh, building uh, digital capabilities uh, at Mali in particular is experimenting and learning within the limits of our technological infrastructure and human resources, as I just said, because of the many things we, we've seen just before. And uh, we're looking forward to become a hub for collaborations between the art world and the digital sector. So create something new when we're we can create like a, a new space of knowledge and, and a culture of collaboration where, where the digital sector and the digital entrepreneurs will understand our needs, our requirements. And there is something that is something that, that we have just seen through our projects. It is a very uh, heartwarming, if, if you wanna say it this way, to see that the developers you're working on uh, during the past year are starting to understand how the museum thinks, as well as how the museum workers start to learn how the digital entrepreneurs think as well. And of course, there is always this understanding through data analysis um, of our public willingness and capacity to access our digital platforms and the content we are working on. So I think this is for us. We are ready to open up the discussion and read some of the, the questions you have uh, wrote in the chat box. So, do you see them, Jose Carlos? I'm just gonna- Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, there is just one question. Is this Peruvian artist directory available? It will be available online in the next uh, early, I mean, month or so, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's, and yeah, um, we, we, as Rafael was also mentioning, it's, it's a work of many professionals to build the best possible um, uh, information in terms of quality also, because I mean, the museum, um, though it wasn't, I mean, very much offline, its quality has been always uh, amazing. So, I mean, in everything, academically speaking, particularly and its publications, now we have to, Get that same quality into the digital realm. We, we, I mean, we 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 can we cannot uh, neglect quality. That's one of the issues that we've been always uh, 
prioritizing in all in all the uh, I mean all for the work of the museum. Yes, there is another one. Have you any experience in immersive exhibitions? Uh, I'd like to know more about what the meaning of immersive it is, because we can go to VR or what we shown before uh, the digitization of our galleries. Uh, but the further we've gone, I'm showing uh, 3D models of our galleries. We haven't tried VR so far because of COVID, of course, but it will come one day. Um, I don't know if that answered yeah. the question. And, and when we did these immersive things with 3D, it was also a way for us of experimenting something that we never tried before. So it's we first we analyzed uh, we benchmarked two or three platforms before deciding to work with one of them uh and uh and i mean we are constantly testing things we we i mean once more the the paradigm of the museum as a static thing is over we we are trying to uh give a very um refreshing uh way of delivering content and and um, we also i mean we also work with google arts um, and culture so I mean, there are many ways in which people may access the content. So th this was just one way. I don't think that many of us, I mean, many of us, if we compare the 3D experience with the real experience, of course, the, the, the real experience is way better in many respects. But once more, it's, it, I mean, it enables access to people that come from different parts of the world. Plus, I mean, there, there is this question, which I, I, I like to answer about trying to provide access to people that have limited pro, band, uh, bandwidth. I think that, yes, if you have the content, you may work with, uh, with um, TV stations, nas national, the national uh, radio and TV, for example. So, I mean, there are other possibilities of, um, of engaging if you have the content. If you have the content, you can think about TV, radio, uh, so it's it's also the non-digital platforms that allow to transmit knowledge to different audiences, either physically, uh, radio, TV. But those platforms need to be needs to be articulated to generate uh, uh, unison experiences in our audiences. Uh, but the idea that's what that's why the idea of platform is not a technical, but it's also cultural. Platforms must generate access. Uh, to open up the dialogue. So I mean, we, we I mean we were thinking about let's say we 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 saw some spikes of 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 of, of content uh, that was generated through the um, uh, online uh, um, online um, uh, um, K twelve um, program national program. So we realized that some of our content was being used by the by the teachers. And we thought, okay, that's great, but perhaps we, we may produce with them some kind of TV program about those contents. So, I mean, we, we, I mean if we have the content, the, the way in which we can show it, it's, it's, it doesn't need to be uh, only online, especially in certain areas that the broadband access is limited. In the Amazon, for example, is quite limited. You need to think there on, a, on, a, on an offline transmedia perspective. Yes. In, in a very practical way, uh, probably, and we do always do hard decisions or decisions thinking about accessibility in terms of limited bandwidth. Uh, we've done it with the uh, historias as well. At the beginning, we were thinking of a very complex interaction, interactive online. Uh, we were gathering uh, examples from other museums, and then we told between us and with the developers, and we came to the conclusion that many people won't be able to enjoy the experience because of that so we keep it we try to keep it simple and uh, to move uh, in relation of development of digital in, in peru and we would like to to be part of this digital transformation transformation and the giving of capabilities to the to, to our audiences at large and, and peruvians at large so i'll end with that word i think we're Mm -hmm. coming along our our session is is there any other question you would like to to ask jose carlos something else to add um you would just add to that i mean you should uh, i mean uh, we invite you all to take a look at, at the website it's not just the website uh, 
as as a as a as a as a website, but it has also these other uh, uh, technologies embedded to it. I mean, so take a look at, at at the website and the services, and and we'll be happy also. I mean, you have any questions at some stage? We'd love to 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 share our ideas with with, with you. Thanks. And of course, we want people to come to Peru. That's the thing. That's, 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 that's the last, the last. Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, they put so much money into advertising to visit Peru. But I tell you, you put uh, ten percent of that money into exhibitions, digital experiences, and you will have more audiences, more people coming to 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 Peru or to any other country. I mean, exhibitions digital or physical, they close the gap between the audience and the actual real experience. Of course, advertising is important. It, it, it makes that, I mean, it, it connects that in a more efficient way, but you need a lot of money for that. And um, countries like Peru cannot compete perhaps with, I don't know, uh, the Arab Emirates or Egypt, I don't know. But the thing is that we may be able to compete with content, with quality of content. So that's 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 the answer to the last uh, comment about that it it's you get excited to visit Peru. That's part of the aim. Yeah, of course. Yes, it is. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for uh, listening our presentation, our session, and I think we could call it today. Uh,